Hello everyone, welcome to Global Online University and here is a very big announcement that we are going to conduct a rapid revision action plan to revise entire syllabus in seven days and uh, this, will this will cover all your units so that you can definitely do well in your upcoming examination of UGC NTA November 2021. Uh, it's, it's very important time. This last seven days are very, very, very crucial. Uh, you may not get time to read important concepts. So we have brought a solution for that. What we will be doing is that we will be covering an, all the important concepts of every unit. So today we are going to start with teaching aptitude. Only thing is you have to do is that you have to quietly ensure that in one go, you just see this entire video and then you can revise your MCQs as uh, whatever you have done from so many months, whatever preparation you have done. But this last seven days, you have to be ensured that whatever concepts you have revised, you have to definitely go for once, one revision. And this video is made with an intention that in one go, you can revise the entire teaching aptitude in an hour. So let's start the session for the day. Now, you know that this particular unit will be having total number of questions is five and total number of marks will be a 10. So each question stands for two marks. Quickly, let's see what exactly is the uh, syllabus uh, for teaching aptitude. So it starts with the teaching concept, the objectives, levels of memory. So you have three levels of memory that is, uh, sorry, levels of teaching, where you have three levels of teaching that is memory, understanding, reflective. Question comes on this also many a times. So you should be very sure. Requirements and characteristics. Then we have learner's characteristics. So wherein we have academic characteristics, social characteristics, emotional characteristics, and cognitive characteristics. You have a topic on individual difference. You get one question on individual difference. So you know, should know the concept of individual difference. The next you have is factors affecting teaching related to. So you have teacher as an uh, important factor, learner support material, instruction facilities, learning environments so on this one question is touched on this topic. Then a uh, definitely and 100% question on uh, teacher-centered and uh, learner-centered methods in wherein offline and online methods are, uh, you know, also considered. Uh, swayam, Swayam, Prabha moves. There is one question on this. The next topic will be teaching support material that is traditional, modern and IT, uh, ITC-based teaching. And comes finally is evaluation method where you have various types of evaluation uh, elements and types. Uh, then you have uh, evaluation about evaluation and choice based credit system, computer based testing and even evaluation in uh, innovation and evaluation system. So let's start uh, the, cons uh, I mean to say we have just quickly seen the syllabus. So let's start with the theory now what exactly uh, it starts from. So first one, we, we, which we have is objective. So here definitely one question comes regarding the overall objective of teaching. Uh, so if I uh, divide it into two parts, it comes as general and specific, where you have, you know, this question is very commonly seen in many of the uh, papers, previous years papers. So what type of uh, uh, impact or what type of objective does teaching has? So it hasn't changed or it, it talks about the overall development or all round personality of uh, the students to, you know, to change or to come up with overall personality and uh, development with curriculum, uh, which includes shaping of behavior, adaptability that is adjusting to the new environment, to encouraging the students to learn, that is to create a desire to learn. All this are the form of questions. So now you know that you have revised MCQs, you have learned so many MCQs, you have done so many MCQs, so how it gets connected to acquaint them with the content of knowledge, the content of uh, subject, that is the subject mastery. A specific talks about developing critical and logical thinking, uh, creating interest, that is, that's what I said, desiring learning to develop an understanding and to develop the knowledge. So these are basically, uh, it goes with what the objectives of teaching, 
a definite question uh, can be expected from this topic. The next one which you have a uh, point is phases. Now there was one question on this phases of teaching. So basically how many phases are there? There are three phases that is pre-active, interactive and post-active. So post-active it means prior after. So pre-active it is which is before. So it refers to planning. Interactive phase is one which refers to the, uh, you know, uh, the continuous process, you know, the, the ongoing process, sorry. So which refers to the conduct and management and post-active is uh, refers to the follow-up. So in one of the question, one of the year, there was a question on this phases. So you should know that teaching has three phases. One is pre-active, one is interactive, and one is post-active. Pre-active is concerned with planning. Interactive is concerned with your, uh, which is, it is the one which refers to your uh, conduct and management and post-active refers to follow-up. Then coming to the next topic is um, a role of teacher. So what role does a teacher play? Uh, helping the students in making them understand new concepts, providing the real world context breaks learning environment, uh, focusing on realistic approaches, encouraging the students to ask questions. There was uh, a question, there is a question on this that what is the role of a teacher? So basically the teacher plays the role, you know, um, where the teacher encourages the students to ask more and more questions and enhance the collaborative learning. So, uh, yes, this is how uh, very impressive the ro role teacher plays in the life of a student. Uh, coming to the factors which are definitely affecting uh, the teaching. So, we will see one one factors. In basic, there are nine factors which talks about teacher, learner, support material, teacher-student relationship, instructional facilities, teacher administration relationship uh, then you have learning environment classroom environment uh, specifically and uh, certain administrative policies so in that with, when we talk about teacher so teachers qualification teachers knowledge awareness of the factors teachers experience uh, expectations uh, teaching skills which were which are very very important methods that is pedagogy of teaching uh, the approach uh, towards the student, personality and behavior, which also creates an important impact, level of adjustment and mental health of the teacher, discipline and economic factor. So definitely here, you may not get a direct question. So they may they will give you uh, some instances, some situation. And from that, you need to, you know, you go for the question. And uh, based on this example, you may get a specific question related to teacher. When we go with learner, so learner's physical and mental health, learner's basic potential, learner's level of aspiration and motivation for achievement, uh, goals in the life of the learner and readiness and willpower. So here also there were many questions from previous year examination, which talks that uh, many a times they give you the options like whether learners, parents, uh, qualification or the socioeconomic background or their, uh, you know, um, uh, the society from where they come? No. So the, those are not, you may get an odd man out. So basically learners, mental health, physical health, uh, basic potential, the capability he has, uh, aspiration, uh, then it's goals, okay, his goals and uh, the desire and the readiness with the willpower. So this will be the right op option. So when you're, when you're reading the theory question, uh, theory concepts, please try to recall that what, what type of questions can be expected or been asked earlier. So next uh, next topic will be, next uh, factor will be support material, wherein we have all the type of audios, videos, online tutorials, uh, journals, online tests, all kinds of teaching aids. Apart from this, all the uh, ways or, you know, uh, every mean in order to make your uh, teaching effective uh, with the help of the support material. Teacher-student relationship, yes, there was a question on this also. It has to be, uh, you know, with a good bonding. Uh, there has to be an authority. There has to self-discovery. Self-discovery is also a uh, topic of, you know, learning. A positive relationship which, which should not cross the limit. There has to be discipline. Uh, it develops a proper learning structure which results into positive outcomes so that the student gain, you know, important knowledge from the teacher. 
Next factor is instructional facilities. So on this also, uh, we get a question like what this instructional facilities do. Definitely they create or they, uh, they are important in order to create learning. Uh, the facilities can be in the form of um, laboratory, audiovisual presentations, seminars, library, uh, which can be used in order to deliver the you know formal instructions. At the same time, it enhances teaching learning process. So teacher administration relationship, uh, which should be you know very professionalism. Uh, there, the definitely with the professionalism will help teaching learning process to improve or to grow to achieve the goals in the organization, which will have, uh, you know, better relationship between teacher and the administration. So on all this, there were definitely questions. So now, uh, please remember, these are the quick revision points, which yes, uh, there is something called as instruction facilities, there is something called as teacher to student relationship, there is something called as teacher administration relationship. Next is the classroom and the learning environment. Yes, uh, it differs. Um, as per the situation, the location, the context uh, uh, in the which is involved in teaching learning, a wide variety of settings as per the modern times also. And uh, this also includes the uh, educational setting, which will help the uh, which will help or facilitate learning. Apart from this, the administrative policies, uh, policies, which will be like a governing bodies. Uh, definitely to take care that the teaching learning process happens in a in a defined framework all the basic facilities um, will be given because if they are lacked it will restrict the classroom learning activities autonomy uh, to the teacher is given with respect to the methodologies of uh, teaching learning uh, which will definitely enhance the uh, learning process and that also in the positive environment. So yes, these factors, so you may not, as I said earlier, you may definitely not get a direct question, but there are many instances, there are many odd men outs where you will definitely get these factors, which you have to uh, go with a right selection. You have to read the question and go with right selection. The next one is that forms of education. So basically, there are three forms of education, starting with formal, informal, non-formal. So the formal is the one which is, you know, which is like uh, provided with the help of schools, colleges and universities. Informal is the one where the uh, the first uh, child ex, uh, gets, you know, uh, comes in contact uh, with the learning process in the form of family, friends, society. And then comes, uh, next is your non-formal, which is again a systematic activity, which is carried uh, for the formal education. But in the year, in non-formal, it is basically with the help of the uh, distance learning, that is the correspondence uh, courses which are done in a correspondence mode okay so the forms of education there are three forms of education that is formal informal and non-formal the next one you have is your next uh, topic is uh, memory uh, sorry levels of teaching very very important question definitely one topic uh, i mean to say based on this topic one question comes so first of all who has developed the level so let's see as we have seen in syllabus also, there are three types of levels of teaching, that is memory, understanding, and reflective. I have put it in an order only, that is first is the memory, the lowest, then comes your understanding, and the highest is your reflective. Developed memory was developed by Herbert, understanding level which was developed by Morrison, reflective which was developed by Hunt. So now let's see the features of every level. So when we go with memory level, it is basically with rote memorization, recalling, uh, understanding is mastery of the subject uh, to understand in the form of understanding. Reflective level, it is use of knowledge and skills in order to solve the problem. Uh, now, again, next topic is coming up with how the memory level of teaching happens. It is thoughtless, understanding is completely thoughtful, and reflective is, will be highest, uh, highly thoughtful. So under memory level, how do you uh, practice this memory level with the help of oral written test or with the essay type of questions? Uh, understanding level, it is very comprehensive or it is based on objective type of questions. Uh, reflective level, it's, you know, it's like an essay type of questions or a critical and creative, which will enhance critical and creative skills. 
so memory level it basically is you know uh, found at lower classes understanding at middle classes and the reflective level is at higher classes memory level in which it is teacher centered as it is written but it teacher centered in what form it is authoritarian and dominant understanding level though it is teacher centered but it is permissive permissive means uh, doing uh, allowing the child to do certain things but only with the prior uh, you know uh, permission or prior uh, uh, with the help of only uh, teachers uh, guidance or support reflective level is completely learner centered uh, where the learner has plays in democratic role so here again uh, there are questions seen on the uh, the one the who has developed the theory the question seen on which type of uh, active uh, attribute the level has question scenes on uh, what type of uh, uh, you know uh, examples are suit, uh, suit, uh, sorry which will suit the every type of level and uh, whether it is dominated by whom so you should either in the match the following or in you know in the normal mcq questions you get the topic on this topic you definitely get the questions so hope this levels of teaching is done going next is yes there is definitely a question seen nowadays on uh, syllabus and curriculum in uh, previous year question papers you know uh, in the older syllabus also this questions were there on syllabus and curriculum so let's quickly have a look so when i'm talking about uh, uh, syllabus let's go for a meaning so syllabus is nothing but a document which contains the the cons the portion of the concepts which are covered in the subject specific subject so syllabus goes subject wise whereas curriculum is an overall content which is taught in an educational system as a, a sorry a, in in an educational system or in a course so syllabus is something which is oriented from greek term whereas curriculum is the one which was uh, from the latin term syllabus is set for a specific subject curriculum is uh, specified for a specific course or a, a specific uh, you know stream or field uh, syllabus is very descriptive whereas per curriculum is prospect uh, prescriptive syllabus is narrow in scope whereas cur curriculum is much more wider uh, syllabus is basically you know uh, based or set out by exam board whereas curriculum is by the administration or the government of the uh, particular school institute or a college uh, the term for the syllabus uh, term it means it's talking about the tenure the time period so this is fixed normally a year you know uh, which can be uh, stretched to 3 years also or many many times 5 years whereas curriculum is till the time the course last what is uniformity in syllabus it is it varies from uh, a teacher to a teacher that is from one teacher subject teacher to another subject teacher whereas curriculum is basically same irrespective you know the different type of teachers subject teachers the next one you have is the next topic which we are going to study is um, magazines a very important topic on they again here they give a lot of examples and based on that you need to under, identify which magazines or they give you the magazines magazines are nothing but the principles of teaching so you need to uh, find out which are the uh, exact principles or magazines of teaching so basically i have given all with the help of example so let's see one by one known to unknown wherein you know the pupil know the people have the you know uh, some previous knowledge and based on that teacher gives some uh, new knowledge to the student simple to complex teacher starts with the simple uh, form of teaching and then slowly slowly uh, take the students to the com complex co content of teaching concrete to abstract where the teacher starts with the mental development uh, you know of the pupil with uh, with the help of the concrete things and slowly slowly take it to the uh, abstract content, uh, contents uh, that is at a later stage coming to particular to general that is uh, giving a specific example and then uh, coming to a general law or a principle uh, by the teacher then we have whole to part that is which is based on the gestalt uh, psychology uh, 
that is first we perceive the object as a whole and then divide it into various parts then we have a psychological to logical that is based on the interest aptitude capacity of the child and then you know uh, uh, when it comes to subject matter uh, uh, giving them an idea about the logical arrangement of the subject content induction to deduction that is you know uh, induction where you are arriving at a conclusion by observing it deduction is you arrive at a conclusion after examining all the possibilities empirical to rational that is based on some uh, real uh, sorry uh, real experiences that is ideas and then we move to the rational concepts that is in the logical form of understanding the things analysis to synthesis that is uh, something which you uh, break i mean to say where you talking where you break the uh, problem or a concept into smaller part and then you uh, i mean to say then you the whole idea is been put together so that to, uh, so analysis is nothing but uh, breaking synthesis is nothing but the combining part so these are the magazines of teaching and yes even magazines you will be having uh, one question so you should know all the magazines uh, the principles and uh, whatever form the question comes you should be able to solve it then coming to the next part of the topic is uh, yes next is a bloom's taxonomy a very important concept again uh, yes uh, as per the uh, new uh, concept also and older also but uh, i mean to say there are questions like as you can see in the diagram which are the higher uh, higher order skills which are the lower order skills they can also give you to arrange the levels of thinking so let's see how it goes um that is the concept was brought by benjamin bloom in the year 1956 in order to you know uh, help or assist to provide um, a guide that can be used in order to create an assessment uh, or to create the objectives and the assessment so if you can see uh, the levels of bloom's taxonomy it is also known as bloom's taxonomy so if you can see the levels that is a pyramid form it goes with uh, it starts with um, uh, remembering understanding applying that is application analyzing evaluation and creation so if it if i talk about the higher uh, sorry if i talk about the lower orders of thinking skills so it includes remembering understanding and applying if i talk about higher order of thinking skills it talks about uh, analyzing evaluating and creating so if we go one by one if we talk about remembering as the lowest order so it talks about uh, recalling or recognizing when i talk about understanding it is covering the main idea you know the views or uh, summarize when i talk about applying it is basically uh, providing uh, with you know ideas theories and problem solving techniques when i talk about analyzing it is to examine the concepts break down into basic parts evaluation talks about using of uh, standards and criteria uh in order to view or uh, you know to support the opinions and when i talk about creating it is uh, to assemble the parts of the knowledge into whole uh, by using the creative and problem solving you know uh, ability so uh, what are the expected questions how can it come how you need to you know what what you need to remember it's very clear the next is uh, yes uh, we we are talking about bloom's talk taxonomy but just now we see saw the new terms but you may get original terms wherein it started with knowledge comprehension application okay analysis uh, but it earlier it was synthesis and evaluation now evaluation uh, is one scale down and it has taken the new role of you know creation okay so this is all about bloom's taxonomy now uh, levels of uh, uh, i meant to say levels uh, sorry domains what are the various type of domains so basically there are three types of domain cognitive that goes with your mental ability affective that goes with your events uh, sorry emotions and feelings and psychomotor that goes with your kinetic energy uh, definitely this type of um, uh, from this topic 101 percent the question is going to come wherein they will uh, give you to arrange the cognitive or the affective or the psychomotor domain or they may give you certain examples and from the examples they will tell you to recognize the domain so you have to be very careful uh, all in my mcqs practice i have done but here let's quickly focus on uh, 
the various types of you know domains so when it comes with cognitive domain just now we have done which starts with remembering in the form of taxonomy understanding applying uh, uh, analyzing evaluating and the finally is creating when we talk about affective domain it starts with receiving responding uh, valuing conceptualizing and uh, characterizing now why this comes or how this comes they will give you all the random options and they will tell you to arrange it as per the sequence okay original sequence so you should know the original sequence very well when it comes to psychomotor it is imitation manipulation precision articulation and naturalization so maybe some students uh, need to have this little bit in detail so let's quickly have them in detail starting with cognitive first remembering is nothing but you know recalling all your previous information understanding is basically comprehending the meaning uh, in one's own language or words applying it means application applying in the various situation in order to you know learn the classrooms um, the up uh, sorry which applies what is learned in the classroom in the various situation at workplace analyzing which separate the concepts uh, into the components in in order to understand evaluating is to make the judgment uh, creating is to build the pattern from you know the diverse element this is basically about cognitive let's go with affective so re receiving it means awareness willingness responding it means active participation valuing it means to uh, give the worth or value to the person organizing it means you know um, basically resolving and internal internalizing the values it means you know characterization where you talk about the uh, con uh, controlling the behavior uh, being predictable you know uh, uh, being pervasive or consistent so all this comes as a part of characterization that is affective domain then last one we have a psychomotor domain which starts with imitation that is observing uh, uh manipulation which is about you know uh, performing certain actions uh, precision that is refining uh, ma making it more and more exact or you can say efficient articulation so basically it talks about uh, coordination or adapting the certain series and naturalization it means uh, mastering the high level of performance okay then you apart from this uh, you also have certain taxonomies that is sim there was one uh, i have seen a question once on this so i have thought i'll just quickly do with this topic with you uh, which was the taxonomy which was given by uh, simpson and harrow so in simpson's tax uh, taxonomy it basically starts with perception the set the response the mechanism uh, the complex response that is you know a uh, way of uh, response or one of the strategy uh, it talks about in as per the simpo uh, that is simpson so when i say that it is complex over uh, over to respond so it means the one which is done the act okay uh, it talks about an act adaptation and origination so this also quickly let's let's see with the help of examples so perception it means certain clues uh, set it means mentally emotionally and physically are you ready to act guided response it means it gives the practice skills mechanism it means the uh, it helps to increase the efficiency confidence and proficiency uh, complete overt response it means it helps you to perform automatically adaptation it's adapting the skills in order to solve the problem and originalization it means it creates new pattern for specific situation uh then the one steps which are given by haro which i have quickly written over here itself so it talks about what it talks about the non discursive movements that is the body language the skill movements it means the advanced learning physical movements it means it talks about the stamina uh, perceptual abilities it means the stimuli fundamental movements which talks about you know uh, basis such as walking and reflex movement it talks about the experience uh, by experience it talks about an activity which can be learned by experience and not by you know learning so this 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 are the taxonomies which were given one i have seen a question once on this so even if now the question comes you have to you the the topic is in front of you you have to just repeat it and definitely revise it okay 
uh then next one a topic is important topic is on individual difference uh there was a question seen that uh, individual difference should be considered yes definitely it should be considered uh, we know that individual difference is based on you know the one which is inherited uh in the form of physical mental and temperamental way and the one which we can acquire either socially culturally culturally emotionally or uh, with the help of education the next is yes what are the teacher centered and what are the learner centered methods so when we talk talk about teacher centered method which are conventional traditional teachers are more active uh, stu uh, students are passive in this flexibility is less uh, no as such group activities or it is only one way communication with the help of lecture or team teaching or the ppt format now when i talk about learner centered it is one which is the modern method okay it is the one which uh, focuses on students uh, as well as teacher students are more active there is a lot of amount of flexibility over here group activities are conducted to encourage the students a multiple flow of channels uh, uh, basically it happens with the help of tutorial assignment or a project work or case study then we have as i said traditional form or the modern form in the form of flipped classroom so in traditionally what they do is lectures as well as homework activities whereas in a uh, flipped you know lecture come classroom activities so you, you can uh, definitely uh, give them uh, your it also happens with you know you tell the uh, students to do the concept okay well in advance and then based on that you take an activities in the classroom or show them a uh, certain you know um, a uh, content based videos where the concept gets more clear the next one which you have is the blended form of learning the most accepted uh, learning environment is blended wherein uh, it is you know you consider the face to face physical mode of learning as well as your online but when you blend them when you combine them we get a new form of learning that is blended uh now in we are talking about uh, learning so definitely we should know that what type of methods are used so it is basically the pedagogy and andragogy so let's see uh, what is andragogy it is a self directed learner large amount of life experience he learns through uh, learning needs closely related learning needs are closely related to social roles uh they are focused on uh, solving the problems and they are interest in sorry intrinsically motivated it means within uh, that is your self desire your self motivation form when we talk about pedagogy that is it is basically a uh, learner dependent on uh, the teacher a few life experience are only shared learning needs are dedicated by the dictated by the teacher Uh, they are subject or the content centered and they are extrinsically motivated it means the teacher need to extrinsic and intrinsic just remember very well intrinsic it means from inside you whatever type of motivation you get you get from inside whereas extrinsic it means the motivation which you get from outside that is a push or a encouragement by the teacher apart from that uh, we also have you know some uh, levels if you see by Uh, order so first is the pedagogy that is an engagement and next is andragogy that is a cultivation and next is eutagogy that is realization so pedagogy basically uh, it starts with pedagogy that is the one which built confidence uh, andragogy which helps in understanding and support eutagogy which helps the desire or to create a desire to own learning so if we talk about um, uh, i mean to say uh, the Uh, dictate uh, who it is ruled by so when it comes to pedagogy it is teacher and dragogy it's adult himself and hutagogy is its self determination so if you see uh, the level of instruction is more in the pedagogy but it reduces when it goes to hutagogy the level of maturity is uh, less when it comes to pedagogy but increases as it goes to hutagogy so any type of question from here the level of maturity uh, the level uh, starting level what does every level creates it is dominated by whom you should be able to answer okay the next topic there is definitely there was a uh, micro teaching there are Uh, in this last two three years, there was a concept of micro teaching. So I thought I will quickly touch this topic. So it is basically a technique which aims 
uh, to prepare teacher candidates that is the teacher uh, the trainee teacher to the real classroom setting which was given by brendan thomas it can be also defined as a technique specially used to train the teacher systematically uh, and by allowing them to experiment the te main teacher behavior which helps them the teacher training to learn new skills uh, it helps them to master number of teaching skills and it gains confidence in teaching at the same time if you see a proper uh, you know a uh, well quoted definition of micro teaching so it goes with you know uh, as per the sing uh, lc sing it is a scaled down teaching which encounters the teacher uh, with the small group of the pupil that is uh, five or more which can last for 25 to 20 minutes and it really an helpful experience in order to you know acquire the skills when it comes to micro, macro teaching, it is uh, it occurs when a teacher provides instruction. This is an actual classroom situation. It usually is longer than 10 minutes. Uh, macro teaching is done uh, in the lecture format and definitely it is also used for uh, introducing new concepts or practicing the new skills. Then going with one of the concepts is discovery learning. As I said, one small topic we will do. It, discovery learning is based completely on this constructive approach, uh, based approach. So basically where, you know, the learners are active, uh, they are involved in the process of learning with the help of a good amount of knowledge construction. The role of the uh, teacher is in, uh, in the social constructivist is, you know, to help the students build knowledge, control the uh, existence of the students during the teaching learning process. So what are the steps? Or th there was a question on this also. What type of uh, uh, cycle it has? So it goes with engaging the students, exploring them, explaining them, extending the uh, support and evaluating them in the correct order. So when it comes to constructive approach, they have the specific test, uh, step, step, sorry, which starts with engaging and which uh, ends with evaluation. Then uh, the next topic uh, which we have is now is, uh, yes, types of evaluation, very, very important topic. So when it goes with types of evaluation placement, this type of evaluation is basically to understand what type of course is suitable to the student. Diagnostic, that is you do to find out the remedies. Formative and summative, we are going to do in detail along with norm reference and uh, criterion reference. So when it comes to uh, norm and criterion, uh, definitely uh, norm is that where you know where you compare your uh, uh, a student okay uh, with the uh, uh, comparison of the one student with individual student with the other students with his classmates or a group of students whereas in criterion you just compare a student's knowledge and skills against the uh, standard set Okay, so the performance of the other students does not affect in this uh, as per the student score. Uh, when we come to formative and summative, formative is the one of the um, like for example continuous type of evaluation. Summative is the one which is done at the end. So formative is throughout the course. We can tell uh, it is too important in order to identify the gaps and to improve teaching, whereas uh, it happens in the form of you know the approaches that support specific needs of the students. When it comes to summative, it is done at the end. Uh, basically, why? Uh, it is to collect the evidence about the students' knowledge and skills which you have learned and how it is with the help of the cumulative assessment which is taken at the end of the, you know, like a fine, uh, the semester end examination or the final examination. Now, if I give you an example of formative, it is when the chef test, uh, tastes the soup okay uh, like an individual you can say but summative when you, the same to soup has been tested by number of guests okay, it's guest okay now here if you want i have again given you the same concept of formative and summative but in a detail way so you can just pause a, a video for a minute and just check it is you know uh, basically it's an ongoing process it is done at the end it is monitored uh, for uh, aimed with learning it is aimed with you know to evaluation it provides feedback it provides a result it occurs uh, many times uh, during the course it occurs uh, you know at the end of the course uh, depending upon if it is semester exams semester patterns or two semester exams 
uh, formative has a wide range of question formats, whereas uh, summative is limited to this question format. They are, they are both basically more on subjective oriented part. Okay. Yes. Next one you have. Um, here I have just given a table for a grading system. So you should know that O stands for outstanding with a, a grade of 10. Uh, F stands for fail with zero. Absentism, okay. P uh, with a grade pass with a grade point of four. C is average with a grade point five. B above average with a grade point six. B plus is good, seven. A very good, eight. And A plus is excellent, that is nine. Okay. Apart from that, you something you have something called as computer assisted evaluation and computer based evaluation. Assisted it means like in your online examination, uh, with the help of you know or the link given to the students. Uh, the same way, uh, even NTA UGC Net correct can conduct this uh, online examination where the specific centers have been allotted. Students have to go there and take this online examination computer-based evaluation where your evaluation happens with the help of the OMR sheet that is optical mark reader answer sheets uh, which is again uh, technology uh, based but uh, with the help of this technology your results or your uh, your uh, sheets are assessed or evaluated okay then uh, as I said that uh, formative summative comes in cholestic areas okay so there are you know these are the examples and what what forms it has been taken but apart from them uh, you have continuous compressive evaluation uh, now which is regular which is you know based on a lot of characteristics and which is definitely one of the important tool so quickly let's have its uh, uh, understand this topic in detail so the main aim is to assess every child uh, minimize the stress uh, it should be done on a compressive and a regular basis, which provides, you know, space for the teacher for uh, the teaching, which it's a, it is a tool for detect, detecting uh, and correcting the error, uh, sorry, uh, specific uh, things which are not been understood by the students. And it uh, provides them with the great skills, the learners, it provides a learner with the great skill. When, uh, when the objectives are been asked or what are the objectives? So first of all, it makes the process, you know, via learner centered, uh, focused on learner centered. Uh, assessment is an important part which is taken care. A judgment is fair over here based on the learning uh, or, you know, uh, the environment and the growth. It provides the scope uh, for the assessment and it evaluates, uh, the evaluation helps to improve the achievement of the students. Uh, functions yes it is done by with the help of the teacher uh, it's it helps to detect the weaknesses at the same time it helps the learner uh, you know to uh, come up with the best type of strength it is done so that the students know the strength and the weaknesses like a SWOT it helps to change the attitude as a va as a value and definitely it takes care of both cholestic and co areas. So let's quickly have the example of co areas. So it depends upon the life skills that is thinking, emotional and social, work, uh, education, uh, ITC, visual arts, health uh, with the help of, you know, a physical, uh, a, that is physical education, sports and first aid, attitudes and values with respect to the teacher, uh, classmates, the programs and the environment and value system. I've just given examples in the next slide for life skills, basically, you know, thinking skills, what will come, social skills and emotional skills and attitudes and values, what will come. Visual performing arts, which will talk about photography, painting and sculpting. So here also you can take a one minute pause and just see this example. So in case if you get various examples, you should be able to, you know, uh, write it. Okay. Then you have a topic cause an achievement test. So achievement test, test is basically divided into two that is standardized and teacher made. St uh, standardized test uh, is it's in the form of, you know, format uh, or a standard followed from one institute to another. Uh, basically your topic is uh, teacher mode. So teacher mode, whereas uh, oral or a written examination or a practical examination happens. So when it is written, it is based on essay type, uh, short answers or, you know, objective type oral, you know what it is and practically also the demo. Okay. The next topic you have is you the common, common types of learning disorders. This was very frequently seen in one of the uh, two, three times this was seen. Okay, um, uh, we are talking about uh, 
uh, dyslexia so that is a reading difficulty dyscalculia so that is you know uh, basically a uh, difficulty in numbers that is mathematics then you have this graphic uh, this graphia uh, this graphia is basically a uh, ability sorry it is basically the difficulty with uh, writing uh, this presia or uh, you know sensory integration disorder uh, so difficulty with reference to motor skills uh, dyphasia or aphasia that is language auditory uh, processing disorder that is you know difficulty in hearing uh, the sounds and visual processing disorder that is difficulty in uh, interpreting the information so here i have given you the uh, the problems also what exactly it creates but basically the types of disorder and the meaning was seen in the match the following questions or you know uh, matching them up with their uh, proper meaning so you should be able to understand and remember this okay uh, then yes coming to the uh, choice based credit system so basically this is an educational model that offers you know uh, option for the courses subjects based on the choice elective purposes and the skills uh, unlike not in the traditional form you know uh, system so best thing in this particular thing is uh, it is it is talking about the time the effectiveness in the teaching learning platform uh, along with flexibility you know Uh, or it helps to uh, you know uh, have the core uh, uh, list of elective core and soft skills courses uh, the regulation uh, states that credit it means is nothing but the standard methodology so now uh, when we uh, see them in detail so basically there are three types of uh, courses that is the core the elective and the foundation uh, so uh it was a core where it talks about you know choosing a core subject uh, uh, in order to complete the requirement elective is basically uh, which aims to increase the student skills okay expose them to the various subjects uh, and give them the freedom with respect to the personal interest and foundation is an ability enhanced courses which helps them to you know offer the a uh, value based subjects so this is how it goes so you should know what they are divided into and how uh, as basically uh, the grading system is happens so this we have done in earlier also uh, with respect to you know uh, uh, with the help of uh, average points uh, uh, grades and grade points okay so now let's see uh, what exactly the next topic is so yes you have swayam swayam prabha and uh, moves so basic what is swayam so in detail i have covered all this topic so let's quickly have a look so swayam is nothing but the study of study web of active learning for young aspiring minds uh, it's an indian massive online platform a move platform which was started with ministry of uh, launched by ministry of human resource development I, along with neptil iit madras google inc and persistent system it has the principles of assess equity and quality uh it digital uh, it helps the digital divide uh, accessible to the students uh, who have been so far not able to uh, utilize this facility it is a free entry to the web courses uh, based on the advanced education higher school high school skills sector under digital india uh next is uh, basically uh you're talking about teaching which is ranges from you know standard night to post graduation certification you can uh, avail the certification which also carry the a uh, credit to the academic record which was started from 2016 but for that you have to go for a nominal amount of registration fee and sit for the final examination which is for both teachers as well as students the courses it uh, undertakes is some computer science language mathematics arts entertainment management general library education uh, which are taught by great uh, more than you know thousand selected faculty Uh, next is it has its nine coordinators very important uh, topic and uh, many a times they give you this uh, coordinators or they tell you to explain them in detail uh, with the help of their uh, acronym is given and the full forms so it it starts with aict that is all india technic council for technical education uh, then it is neptil that is national program for technology enhanced learning for engineering 
UGC that is Un University Grant Commission, which talks about you know uh, taking uh, post graduation uh, education. A CEC that is Consortium for Educational Communication for undergraduate courses, and CRT that is uh, National Council for Educational Research and Training for School Education, and IOS that is National Institute of Open Learning specific specifically for school education, IGNU that is Indira Gandhi National Open University which is for uh, distance mode of education, I am uh, B that is I am Bangalore which is for management studies and NITT. TR, that is National Institute for Technical Teacher Training and Research, basically for teacher training. Uh, then we have next is, you know, uh, this nine coordinators, which I said, it can again come in any form or, you know, match the following, or you should recognize what is basically for what. So this slide is just an example that you should keep the nine coordinators completely, properly, thoroughly learn it. The next one you have is um, the quadrants of uh, Swayam that are, there are four assessment, e-tutorial, e-content, and discussion forum. There are four quadrants which are there. You should be able to keep this in mind. The next is um, Swayam Prabha. So Swayam Prabha, it's a group of direct to home channels. There are 34. Please update it. There are 34 direct to home channels, which are uh, 24 by 7 available with the help of GSAT, that is geostationary satellite. Uh, but the objective is equal assess. It includes school as well as higher education, life classes, uh, curriculum-based courses, and it is very helpful for the competitive preparation. Now here, how, what are the basic features? The content goes, you know, um, for four hours, which is repeated five to six times in a day. It allows the students to watch it as per their convenient time. It, uh, it has channeled or it, the channels are uplink from a BSAC that is Gandhi Nagar. Now, what is this BSAC full form? That is the Bhaskar Acharya Institute for Space Application and Geoinformatics. It is uh, the contents are provided by NEPTIL, IITs, UGC, CC, IGNO, NCRT, and NIS. Uh, the portal is uh, who maintains the portal that is in Flipnet, that is Information and Library Network Center. Basically, this is the curriculum based uh, contents which are uh, applicable for post graduate as well as undergraduate. The disciplines uh, under Swayam Prabha is, you know, arts, science, commerce, performing arts, social science, humanity, uh, engineering, technology, law, medicine, and agriculture. Coming to the moves is nothing but a massive online course which is again a web-based platform, which provides unlimited number of students, uh, provide helps to unlimited number of students worldwide, okay, which was established back in 2008, and it gained the momentum in 2012. Uh, yes, here, the basic idea for this particular slide is, I have uh, brought us that, many times I've seen that you they give uh, the topics, you know, uh, moves in India. So that is with the help of NEPTIL, with the help of uh, NEPTIL only, uh, because EDX is based, uh, a prop basically it is for US course, so it's again US. Udemy is also based out of UF, open to study, that is Australia, and VIS, that is India and US. So you can get a question that which type of moves, you know, platform are available in India. So you should be aware of this, okay? Uh, then, yes, the next important is uh, Edgar's Dale Cone of Experience. So, again, um, it is, you know, uh, what based on what uh, uh, sentence or saying goes by Benjamin Franklin, tell me, I forget, teach me, I remember, involve me, I learn. So, 90% of what you do is learn, okay, rather than 10% of what you read. Okay, so 70% uh, of what you say and read, uh, write remembers, 50% of what you hear, 30% of what you see, 20% of what you hear, and 10% of what you read. Okay, so your uh, learning by doing is active. That, uh, otherwise, it is, you know, just seeing and reading, it's more passive. Based on this experience, uh, or, uh, sorry, Edgar's Dale Cone of experience, there is one more constructive theory that is Bruner's theory of constructive theory, which is learning by abstract, that is symbolic experience, learning through observation, which is called as iconic experience, learning by doing, which is called as direct experience or inactive. So <clears throat> what type of activities are undertaken? So it is like evaluation, creation, defining, analyzing practicing, applying it, demonstrating, 
explaining, describing, listing, and defining. So this is how it goes. So what important thing is what percentage and Brunner theory modes you have to keep in mind. Okay. Next, uh, yes, uh, there is one concept of Gagne's uh, levels of learning. So there are basically there are nine levels. It starts with gaining attention, informing the learners, stimulating the recall, uh, stimulating, uh, recalling the prior learning, presenting information, providing the guidance, eliciting the performance, providing feedback, perform assisting, assessing the performance and enhancing preparation and transfer. Okay, so the first stage goes with preparation, wherein you have these three activities. Next is instruction, where you have next three activities. And then the next two comes in the part of what? Uh, it comes in the part of assessment and transfer. Okay. Uh, yes. So, yes, that uh, one topic we have is uh, that is seen in 2019 question paper. So I've just thought I'll quickly revise what is positive and negative enforcement. So positive enforcement, that is the... That is the one which focuses on the uh, rewarding uh, reward what is done well by the students. Like, for example, a teacher handing out gold stars to the students, uh, you know, uh, for doing his homework on time. Negative reinforcement is a strategy that focuses on removing the negative elements and to promote the positive behavior. So let's see the example is that, you know, the punishment uh, that is decreasing your um, negative behavior by adding uh, something to the to decrease the behavior uh, and or subtracting something so if it is adding it is positive subtracting it is you know just removing out the negativity but it is but it, when it is reforms, reinforcement to increase the behavior so in the positive form we can add something to increase the behavior negative form we can subtract certain things okay uh, so example is that here is scolding a student to get the student to stop texting in the class so this is one of the example of, you know, a, a positive type of uh, reinforcement by removing the negative behavior. Okay. So yes, um, basically, uh, I've, I have tried my level best to maximally quickly revise all the concepts. So now, if even if you don't have the time to read the theory, or if you are a little bit tense, that I didn't revise, I have learned everything, but it is not possible for me to revise. So please ensure that you watch this entire video. And you are you are confirmed with your preparation of teaching aptitude. A small announcement that in case um, if you want to do a rapid revision for paper one, we have came up with the 2000 plus MCQ in the form of PDF. Now, this MCQs will be, you know, the expected questions, the previous year questions or the current affair, which will help you to give, uh, you know, uh, the assess by getting in touch with the contact uh, number and the five, price for the same as 499. Uh, sorry, four double line. Uh, please ensure that maybe this type of revision will help you to uh, boost up your morale, encourage you. And now whatever you have done, you have to just ensure that you are doing your best in the form of revision and giving your best for your upcoming examination. So don't worry, just, just ensure that you're uh, going through the video. You're uh, much more self-confident yes that you will be able to do this okay so tomorrow we will come up with the second video that is unit two and we will just do a rapid quick revision for unit two also so one one day you can concentrate on every unit and at the same time you can focus on your mcqs also so see you tomorrow with the next set of unit in the form of rapid revision so thank you everyone Okay, and uh, ensure that you are uh, having a, you know, a quick amount of uh, uh, revision so that with the help of this, you will be able to uh, remember, remember the concepts and the last moment revision also is done, you know, in a proper way. Uh, thank you.